Top of the hour. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Ted Rollins. Glad uh, to have you with us. And uh, we have a, a verdict in the nasty neighbor stabbing trial in New Jersey. We were taught the jury deliberated for two hours and 41 minutes this morning. They had two questions and we knew this was coming. We knew it was coming soon. We've been watching this trial together. A lot of you think that Zachary Latham should be found not guilty. He claims that he stabbed his neighbor, William Timmy Durham, in self-defense. There's a video of it. We've seen the video a hundred times. Here it is again. The prosecution says no. Latham was arrogant. He provoked this whole thing, this whole buddy brawl, and that he had a responsibility to retreat. Let's go into the verdict, or let's go into the courtroom now uh, and watch along as the verdict is read. Please. All right, now I'm gonna talk to you about how we're going to proceed from here. First and foremost, I received a note from the jury, and it reads, we have a verdict. Now, here's what we're going to do. In a moment, I'm going to ask the foreperson to stand and hand the verdict sheet to the court attendant, who will hand it to me. I will review it and give it to my clerk, who will then review the decision with the foreperson. Thereafter, I will question each of you individually as to whether or not the verdict reported by the foreperson is your individual verdict. And I'll simply say, the verdict, that the, is that your verdict, is what I will ask you. Does everybody understand? And that will include juror number one, because you report as a four-person, then as an individual juror. Do you understand, sir? Yes. Okay, very well. Please stand. And the verdict sheet. Yes, please, sir. Yes, hold on. All right, Emily, if you will, please. How do you find on the count of the indictment charging that the defendant on or about the fourth day of May 2020 in the city of Island, County of Cumberland, after said, and within the jurisdiction of this court, did recklessly cause the death of William T. Durham Sr., contrary to the provisions of NJSA 2C 11 4B1, and against the peace of this state, the government and dignity of the state. Not guilty. Spot. How do you find on the count of the indictment charging the defendant that on or about the fourth day of May 2020, in the city of Violent, County of Cumberland, after said, and within the jurisdiction of this court, did purposely, knowingly, or under circumstances manifesting extreme indifference to human life, recklessly attempt to cause serious bodily injury to William T. Durham Jr., contrary to the provisions of NJSA 2C 12 1B1, and against the peace of this state, the government and dignity of the same? Not guilty. Thank you. Sir, you may be seated. All right, as I indicated, now, juror number one. Yes. The longer full person, now juror number one. The verdict you just reported, was that your individual verdict? Yes. Juror number two, same question. Yes. Juror number three? Yes. Juror number four? Yes. Juror number six? Yes. Juror number eight? Yes. Juror number nine? Yes. Juror number ten? Yes. Juror number eleven? Yes. Yeah. Juror number twelve? Yes. Juror number thirteen? Yes. And juror number 14. Yes. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with the return of your verdict, you've completed your services here to the court. I want to thank all of you uh, for the time that you have devoted to this case and your attention to these details in this very important matter. Uh, I am at this point going to relieve you of the responsibilities that I placed upon you at the time that you were sworn in in this case. That said, I have a couple of words I'd like to say to you cautionary words. You may speak to whomever you want to speak to, uh, including any members of the press. However, before you speak to any member of the press, think about this. How important was it for you to be able to sit in that deliberation room and not worry that what you might say might be disclosed to someone else? That freedom of expression and deliberation is the hallmark of our judicial system. And the ability of jurors to communicate with each other in the deliberation room without fear and to express what they truly need to understand in order to reach a verdict is very important. 
So while there is no particular restriction on you at this point, think before you speak, particularly to a member of the press, would I be willing to say to them, if I was in open court with all my other jurors, with me. so that's the only caution I give. And there is one exception: no one from either side here is permitted to reach out to you, which means no investigators from law enforcement or the prosecutor's office, no investigators from the defense are allowed to question you. Do you understand? If that should happen, you contact my chambers and I will deal with it. Does everybody understand this? Okay. So at this point, I want to thank all of you, uh, and on behalf of both the state and the defendant and all of the persons here present, for the time that you've given to us in deciding this very difficult and important case. And with that, you are released. Now, I'm going to send a little uh, questionnaire back there for you to spend a couple minutes on, if you would. I read every one of them. Tell me what we did right. Tell me what we did wrong. Okay? We try to improve every time we try a case. So your viewpoint as a juror is something that is important, not only in the resolution of the case, but making sure that we can do our jobs in a most effective manner. Thank you very much. Council, have any issue? Thanks. All right. Thank you. You are excused. This case was an absolute tragedy, the entire endeavor. There are no winners here. Mr. Latham, you were successful in your defense, but you still have to live with those, the events of those days and the consequences of it. There's little solace, I know, for the members of the family, but this is our judicial system, and this is how it works. So, with that, there are no winners. It's all losers. But this is a good judicial system, and this is the way it's supposed to work. I want to thank all of you, and we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Zachary Latham, 20-year-old young man, found not guilty. It's the most dramatic ending uh, to a case uh, that um, they happen very often, uh, very uh, infrequently here on Court TV. John